Welcome to part three of this HubDoc tutorial series. Today in this video, we are gonna be talking about the filing system used in HubDoc or what I like to call the filing cabinet. So when you log into your HubDoc account, you will notice that you have all of these tabs up here, which we talked about in tutorial number two. And to the left of that, we have these sort of this folder structure over here. So I like to call this my filing cabinet. <clears throat> if it's not showing up for you, it could be because you have maybe um, another tab opened up over here. So when we open up this tab over here, then the folders go away. So if you happen to just notice that you have just a bar over here that says show folders, if you click on that, that will open up that tab and then you'll be able to see that folder structure. So <clears throat> there's a couple of folders here, but normally what you will see when you're first getting started is you'll have the all documents folder, which is going to be everything in one place and then consolidated. And then there's gonna be subfolders and one of those subfolders is gonna be called uploads. That's where most of your documents are going to be housed. So when you submit documents to HubDoc and um, part one of the HubDoc training video series is how to submit documents to HubDoc, then um, they will sit in these folders and you'll be able to review them and make sure all of the details are correct, but you'll also be able to establish how you want these documents to be filed. So. If we go to our review tab here, these are the three that we just wanna confirm that the, the details for the filing cabinet are what we want them to be. So <clears throat> when I click over here, it's asking me for the document type and we talked about this a little bit in the last video in tutorial number two. And then we're gonna choose our supplier. This is gonna be the name of the folder that this document is going to get filed into. So you want to make sure that, you know, you agree with, with the information that it pulled out so that you can find it again later. And then you can put in the reference number, the date, and the amount, and all of those details. And all of those are going to be searchable details. So you'd be able to search through your folders at any time using the search feature up here, using any of that information that you may have to try and locate a specific document. But what I want to point out is this supplier here. So this supplier is basically the name of a folder and when we go back over here and we click in our uploads you will see that the folder structure that they have created for us is they will automatically if it's a new vendor they will automatically create a new folder for it based on whatever was in that supplier box so this one is google for instance so now if i go down to google in my list of folders all of my google invoices as long as that supplier is chosen will be put into this google folder now, I'm only on the review tab here, that's why it's only showing one, but it's telling me there's 34 invoices. In order to see all 34, I just need to click on the All tab over here, and then all 34 of my Google invoices will be in here, with date and amounts showing, making it very easy to find what I need um, just by scrolling through the list if I don't want to use the search feature up here. Um, the other thing that I pointed out in my last video, and I will re-point out again because it really caused me a lot of anxiety when I first started using HubDoc because I didn't understand. So I was in a folder, I was looking for something, I found what I wanted and I was ready to move on and, and do the rest of my work in HubDoc. And so I'd go to my processing tab and oh my gosh, there's nothing there. There's nothing in my review tab except for this one Google invoice. I know there was other things in there, like where did they go? And that's because we have it filtered right now for just items that are in the Google folder. So as soon as I take that out of there, all of my other items show up again for me in the review. So if you do a search, just be sure that you clear it out before you go to move on, because otherwise you may um, freak out thinking that you've lost all of your invoices, but you really haven't. So these folders are showing you how those are um, getting filed. Now, one thing I will say is when the documents come into the processing tab and artificial intelligence is extracting the data, it will almost guaranteed extract the data differently, if not every time, a lot of the time. So one time it might say Google Inc., and then it'll say Google Inc. with a period, and then it'll say just Google, and you'll have a folder unfortunately created for every one of those. Um, like I'm sure I have an example in here somewhere of something that's that's had that happen. Um, 
I actually try to keep this cleaned up as much as I can, but here, for instance, we have two for crystal clear, and that's because one time it may have called it one thing, and then the next time it added the LLC, excuse me, at the end. And so you'll end up with multiple folders for the same vendor, but, okay, so you have two of the same vendor, but they're spelled differently, and you want those to be combined. So if we go into our settings, and you can't really change it here. I thought maybe you could merge folders, but you can't merge folders. So you can go into your settings, and you can go to your suppliers folder over here. So each one of these folders is considered a supplier, and then they're set up under your suppliers tab in the settings area. So if we scroll down to CyberWorks here and we click on this, it's going to say, okay, where do you want anything that pulls with this name? What folder do you want it to go into? And I want these all to go into the Cyberspace Works folder because that is, you know, in my opinion, the correct name. Actually, I don't even know which one is correct, but most of my invoices are in the one with the space, so that's where I want it to go. So I'm just going to click on Edit Location here. And I'm gonna go into my uploads folder and I'm gonna search for the folder that I want these to go into, which is going to be this CyberWorks folder and I'm going to select it. So now, anytime that it sees a CyberWorks invoice and it pulls it out as CyberspaceWorks or it pulls it out as CyberWorks with no space, it's still gonna go into the CyberspaceWorks folder so that everything is in one place. So now I can close this. And then what I can do is, um, and it looks like it, it already moved everything out of there, so I don't even need to worry about it, but if I needed to, I could just move everything out of this folder by clicking it and dragging it in. So like here, for instance, if I want everything to go into this crystal clear resource folder up here, I can just hold my shift key, highlight all of these, click and drag them into that folder, and then I can go ahead and I can delete this folder and then I don't have that anymore. Same thing now, this is an empty folder. I don't need this folder anymore. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that folder. All right, so that's how you kind of clean up some of that duplicate stuff. And like I said, I it happens occasionally. And the only time that it might really be a problem is if you're searching for things in HubDoc and you know it's not showing up, well then look to see if there's another folder Otherwise, it's really not that big of a deal. It's usually close enough that they at least land next to one another in the list here. So then you can easily see that it's a duplicate and you can periodically just go through and clean those up. So that's pretty much how the filing cabinet works or what I like to call the filing cabinet in HubDoc. Um, and we stay tuned if you found this video helpful stay tuned for hubdoc tutorial number five where we're going to talk about integrating hubdoc with some of your other applications like your accounting software and maybe even a backup system using google drive or something like that and we will get you some tips and tricks on how to best utilize hubdoc for those as well